It's not often that a bounty gets put out for a metallic dragon, and it must be done discreetly. The uncomfortable truth is that shape-shifting covetous stingy pranksters can destabilize an entire region. Dead or alive, the mayor wants it gone, and the party is proven trustworthy. The small lair was riddled with false balls, traps, and mimics. The bard was even tarred and feathered as they chased the cackling dragon to its final chamber. As they enter, a wall lips to reveal its final trick. A gelatinous cube. Part-time maid, part-time mobile home, full-time hungry. So a quick breakdown on our combatants. First we have the gelatinous cube, a 10-foot brick of barely conscious acid that's basically a living breath weapon. It blindly runs towards living creatures and sucks them into itself. It can hold one large or four medium creatures. Its strengths include holding people down, having lots of health, and dealing a lot of pure acid damage. It's weak to anything immune to acid damage or able to hit it while staying out of reach. It's serving as the unwitting companion to the master of this dungeon, the Copper Dragon. Copper Dragons are clever enough to keep these corralled, can hold their breath for quite a while, and are immune to acid. In fact, their primary breath weapon is acid, but Metallic Dragons have two, in this case, a slow effect. Anything that fails can't use their reaction, their speed is half, they can't take both an action and a bonus action, and they can't make more than one attack per turn. Its weakness is that it has low health, which is kind of bad when your damage is melee or on a recharge. Poor thing's gone if it gets surrounded. You might start to see how these things go together, but wait, there's more. On the other side, we have our Shadow Monk Fasuki, Drak the Dragon Sorcerer, Ella the Whisper Bard, and our twitchiest kobold, Guck. They are in one of two scenarios. We got a double feature this time. First is the Copper Dragon being a Wormling. She goes by Breath of the First Frost to mess with strangers, or Fifi for short. She's five and about to make you not alive. Her opening move is lining up a slow breath with as many people as she can, priority on casters, then dart into the cube. If she can't quite make it, she'll make sure she's closest so it picks her up on its turn. She can see everything around her, but has total cover against attacks. She's also immune to most spells like this, because you can't target her through the slime any more than you can through a window. This doesn't act actually count as line of sight. Cantrips blast into the cube, but the bard bailed and is backpedaling. Too little too late, cause now the cube's onto her. Your melee people have to get in cube range to hurt it, but they can't actually block it. Passing a save against engulf forces you five feet away, or you've chosen to fail. So you can't stop it, it just keeps marching forward and scaring your casters. That breath weapon was also a con save, so most of your casters are gonna be too slow to escape. Drac being an exception, being a sorcerer. Once inside the cube, you have three options. You can spend your turn trying to escape, you can attack the cube with disadvantage because you're restrained, or you can 1v1 the dragon. When BP's breath comes back or the cube gets too crowded, she has two options. She can burst out the top, taking cover behind the terrain and blasting people outside the cube now that they're divided, or she can just acid blast everyone from inside the cube. I mean, it's not like it's gonna hurt the- wait, what? It's not you. What do you mean it's not immune to acid? It's literally a pile of acid! Wouldn't it just- <laughs> You know what? Never mind. Point is that the cube is a mobile fortress and companion. Will it go down in a few rounds? Absolutely, but that's plenty of time for her to get her breath back, and that's a game changer for a dragon. Speaking of game changers, time for round two. BP won her escaped, and now she's six and pit. Yeah. As a young dragon, she's large, meaning if she goes in the cube, nobody else fits. Then she's just got a bodyguard whacking them while she rests. This time, however, I'm using a modified setup. The cube is popping up from a false wall behind the party. The slime approaching from behind means that the melee people have to make a decision. Do they stay up front to protect from the dragon, or do they step back to keep the casters from getting sucked up into the cube? No line of sight and damage every round to break concentration is bad no matter what your level is. Round one is similar, blasting with a breath weapon and booking it out of reach. If the cube does manage to get some people, she'll be at an advantage. If it doesn't, she can dart into the cube. It'll only last a few seconds at this point, but one round to heal and recharge means a lot to a dragon. Now those are the basics, but I've got a few extra things to spice things up. Normally, she'd have to spend an action escaping the grasp of the cube or just wait for it to collapse. Personally though, I'd say at this point it realizes she doesn't digest and just lets her leave. If you can train a goldfish to go through a maze, you can train a slime to release non-food, something it already does. Also, these slimes are amazing even when BP gets too large to fit. Remember, breath weapons live or die by how many creatures they can catch, and a cube is a 10-foot mobile wall that pushes people back or picks them up and runs to others. Sure, a high-level player can kill one in a few seconds, but that's 84 damage not going to the dragon. If they don't kill them, they're suddenly nice and grouped up for an acid blast, which I'd personally make the cubes immune to, but that's just me. It works fine regardless. Finally, while well, this doesn't work as well, black dragons also enjoy the cube. They don't have the slow synergy, but they're more palatable of an encounter for most parties, and their breath is more potent. However this goes, today's lesson is on monster interaction. A good combination of creatures is worth far more than the sum of their parts. Like this channel, which combines your likes and comments with my unhealthy amount of monster knowledge to create videos like this. Which is an improvement, I promise, please don't go!